I am not a movie watcher. I don't make it a point to go out every weekend and see a new movie. I do try to see movies that are relevant to my interests, which thanks to that means I've seen some hilariously bad video game movies. Blood Rain, Dragon Ball Evolution, uh, In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale. This one's actually a, a personal favorite of mine because of how bad it is. But going into any of these, I knew they were going to be bad, so I wasn't disappointed. With the exception of one, there was one movie that I was excited for because it looked incredible and it was based off of one of my favorite franchises. And that was Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. This was a big deal when it was coming out. Thanks to the PlayStation, Final Fantasy quickly became known for its absolutely stunning CG cutscenes. And the Final Fantasy games are loved for their stories. Now imagine a full-on movie with both of these factors, and yeah, there was reason to be excited for this movie. Final Fantasy VI is still my absolute favorite game of all time, and the Final Fantasy franchise is still close to my heart. Even if I don't like all of them. So yeah, I was stoked for when Final Fantasy The Spirits Within was coming out. I saw it in theaters. And that night was the first night of many in my teenage years that I cried myself to sleep. The film opens with a dream sequence. Rather than establishing ourselves in the setting and world, we open with vapid imagery that means nothing to us. It's not even exciting imagery. She steps on a plant in some water, I guess. And then the cameraman has too much caffeine. And then she wakes up. That's it. Movies typically start with exciting set pieces or engaging moments to draw viewers in. Spirits Within begins with showing us literally nothing. It's a wasteland. We can't gather anything from this either. It's just nothing. Any of the later dreams in this movie would have worked so much better. Start with the one with aliens fighting or something so that we can at least start asking ourselves questions about what we saw. Well, at least get us asking questions other than... Huh? This introduces us to our main character, Dr. Aki Ross, voiced by Migna. She then plainly lays out the synopsis of the movie using the same words that would show up on the back of the DVD box. It's been 34 years since they arrived on this planet. And not a day passes that the survivors, forced to live in barrier cities, do not live in fear. The question is, will I be in time to save the Earth? She goes to old New York City looking for... something. What that thing is, we don't know. We actually don't even know her name yet. But hey, pretty lights! As she searches, she starts running away from orange goopy thingies, clearly being in some kind of danger from them, but not really feeling any tension from the situation. Then some soldier dudes fly down and land on green goopy thingies and they use their space guns to shoot the orange goopy thingies. Scientist lady is searching for a life form and it's very important that she get it. Guess what the hell do you think you're doing? There's a life form in here. There hasn't been life here in years. Well, there is now. After life. obtaining the life form, there's... Excitement? We're surrounded. No shit! The orange creatures are called phantoms, which explains why we can't see them without sparklers, and they start to make a hasty retreat. I, got you. I love that there's a swell of music right here, like the movie is telling us, whew, that was a close one, thank god they survived, even though we still have no reason to care about any of these people, because at this point, they're still scientist lady and four generic soldiers until they take their helmets off. Turns out Aki has some history with the captain of the soldiers, Grey, voiced by Alec Baldwin, whose voice doesn't fit the rest of the character at all. Yeah, nice to see you too. Okay, at this point we need to address the biggest thing that this movie had going for it. And that's the CG. How good and realistic it looked was a major factor in its marketing and why people wanted to see it. And honestly, parts of it still kind of hold up. There's some imaginative future science gadgetry, and what few shots there are of the city invokes familiarity of things like Final Fantasy VII. A lot of times the backdrops still look really, really good, but that's because those are matte paintings instead of CGI. The hair and skin textures on people are still pretty good, but the same can't be said for the animation. You can't help but feel that human skins were stretched over robots that lack muscle movements. You'll see this a lot in facial movements and trying to lip sync dialogue. And there are times where I swear that Aki has completely different facial features than she does in other scenes. 
But this didn't stop people from hyping up Aki Ross herself, who looked so good and realistic, people thought she could be a real person. And she was getting all kinds of praise for being a female lead in a sci-fi movie who wasn't overly sexualized. Which, thanks to Squaresoft, lasted about a week. This is real. The animators put her in a bikini so that she could be in Maxim's Top 100. Aki meets up with her mentor, Dr. Sid, as they examine the plant they found, which as it turns out, contains a spirit that they've been seeking. Aki, you know there are elements in the Council of Military just waiting for an excuse to shut us down. Look, 20 years ago, who discovered this energy in the Phantoms? You. And who proved the same energy source existed in humans in every life form? You. You made it possible. All life is born of Gaia, and each life has a spirit. Mature spirit, enriched by its life on Earth, returns to Gaia. Ooh, can we get some water to dilute this scene a little bit? Because the exposition here is a little thick. In case you didn't catch it, they're searching for spirits to put together an energy wave that counteracts the energy wave of the phantoms, which would cancel them out and save Gaia, the theoretical spirit of the planet Earth. For that, they need eight total spirits. No time for that though, because there's another dream sequence which shows some aliens or something, and then provides some sweet trailer footage. Okay, I'm gonna play this back again because it bothers me a lot. This is a fine shot as it zooms in on her eye, but it doesn't. It zooms into the middle of her forehead and then jumps over to her eye for two frames. You cheated, movie, but I caught you. The console of people who are still alive are trying to figure out how to best deal with the phantoms. Could you please explain why? He's evil. He's got the angry eyebrows, wears all black, and he's voiced by James Woods. Of course he's the bad guy. A meteor that crashed into Earth years ago is the source of all the phantoms, and General Hine wants to shoot it with a big ol' space cannon known as the Zeus Cannon to kill the phantoms. But Dr. Sid warns that that could injure Gaia, the spirit of the Earth, and that they should use their energy wave idea instead. Then Hine's all, ENERGY WAVE IS A STUPID IDEA! And Dakia's all, "No, IT'LL WORK! And then he's all, PROVE IT! And she's like, "Okay," And reveals that she's contained a phantom inside of herself. Basically, this scene boils down to, SPIRITS AREN'T REAL! Anyway, let's blast the shit out of these phantoms! Aki goes up to continue her search for spirits, and Grey joins her. So, what are you doing? I'm scanning the city for the seventh spirit. Seventh? Jesus, I didn't realize we're on the fourth disc already! The two talk about their past, which causes them to fight... about... something? And how about the fact that I was sent there on a job, and you wouldn't even see me? I was probably helping Dr. Sid collect spirit waves. Well, now I know. So I'm sorry. Well, me too, so we're both sorry. <sighs> and then they almost bang. There's a lot of not good things with this movie, and I feel like a lot of people overlook one of the weakest parts of it. The voice acting is terrible. Everyone is so wooden and dull in their delivery that everything lacks any kind of emotional impact. Ming-Na, who voices Aki, is easily the worst, with every line of dialogue sliding out of her expressionless mouth in the voice booth. We have to treat him, now. I want what life I have left to mean something. Hey. Ever tried to track a sparrow from outer space? <laughs> it's no fun. Alec Baldwin, who does have a good voice, is horribly miscast as Grey and none of the comedic relief jokes land because of poor delivery. I don't even know the names of anybody else because their performance and development is so forgettable. The only exceptions to the voice acting are Donald Sutherland as Sid and James Woods, but I'm certain that's only because James Woods is actually evil. This isn't acceptable for a movie, let alone a video game movie. The dialogue is bland and boring, only partially from writing, but primarily from the lack of acting. It's all right. But just in case you were falling asleep, there's another dream sequence. This still doesn't explain much as it has a bunch of same looking aliens fighting each other, but hey, it provides for more exciting trailer footage that hardly represents the movie. The crew flies out to Tucson in search of the seventh spirit. Yeah, dude, you gonna stab a phantom? Now that their faces were revealed, they get to wear the open helmets. They quickly locate the seventh spirit on a dead soldier's body, but are suddenly surrounded by phantoms. One of the phantoms attacks the soldiers that are with them, rips out his spirit, and then eats it. 
Yes, hi, I have several questions when it comes to the phantoms because it's the most inconsistent thing in this movie. For example, are they ethereal or are they corporeal? It's established early on that they can move through walls and matter. And yet when they get shot and killed, they land on the ground like a physical thing. Why do some phantoms rip out spirits so that they can consume them, even though it's shown that just getting touched by a phantom kills you? Why can we sometimes see them and other times they're invisible? Are they shooting energy or physical bullets? I'd say energy because of the sound effect. But Aki gets shot by a gun using the same sound, and it's shown that she has a bullet stuck in her chest plate. I can't buy into this world that they have when their rules aren't clearly defined. Aki has another dream, which reveals a little bit more of what she's seeing. The spirit inside of her is slowly consuming her. It makes her wake up with a jolt, which is why one of the soldiers shoots her and immediately regrets his actions. Aki is dying to the phantom spirit in her. To save her, Dr. Sid needs to give her the energy of the seventh spirit that they just found. But to do so, she must be kept grounded to reality by a quote, sympathetic spirit through the power of cuddles. Aki has yet another dream, but this time, Grey is also there in her dream. Happy? This dream reveals what happened to the phantoms. They were fighting for some reason, and their world blew up, which made a chunk of their planet crash into the earth, carrying all of their phantoms. And now, their phantoms are pissed! General Hind arrests the heroes, who discuss Aki's dream in their cell. The meteor is a chunk of their planet that got thrown into space when they destroyed their world. But how could they survive the trip across outer space on a hunk of rock? They didn't. They're not an invading army. They're ghosts. Well, duh! Nobody realized this? The phantoms we've been fighting might actually be ghosts? They're the same thing! They'd be like, if I said, that's not an eagle, that's a bird! They're the same thing! To help convince the Consul to fire the Zeus Cannon, General Hine intentionally lowers the city's protective barrier to let some phantoms in. This goes poorly. They're moving with the bioetheric energy flow. That's impossible. No living thing could survive in those pipes. What? How could phantoms live through that? It's almost as if they're not alive at all. Almost like they're... Ghosts? The entire city is boned which does allow for Aki and the others to escape their cell, even though she runs like an idiot. Everybody starts dying, which further raises phantom questions. Like, why are they hostile? If they're the ghosts of beings from another world, why do they want the spirits of humans? I would get it if they needed to eat, but they don't. They just touch people and they die. But other times it's like they struggle to rip the spirit out of someone. Also, watch this part closely. Absolutely nobody gets hit from this crashing ship. The heroes make a daring drive to get to the landing pad to fly away, but... Oh, God. Talk to me, Sarge. Uh, ouch. No! Not... Barrett? The others begin to prep the ship for launch, such as getting fuel and getting the ship free. But it isn't long before leagues of phantoms show up. And then... No! Not... That guy? Or... Her? Whatever. They dead. Over here, you son of a bitch! Did they just censor the word bitch in a PG-13 movie? Well, that's f***ing dumb. A big-ass phantom is about to get the ship, and honestly, it looks like it does several times, when suddenly it's distracted by other guy, barely alive with the cannon. Which begs the question, why didn't he help these two when he could clearly see them? Dick! Grey, Aki, and Sid managed to escape and- Oh my god, there's still over 30 minutes left of this movie?! Everything has been so dull and uninteresting that I've been ready for this movie to be done ages ago! There isn't a single part in this movie that I can even relate to- Oh, wait, here we go. Man, everybody in my squad is dead. You know what that puts me in the mood for? Space banging. Sid theorizes that the 8th spirit that they need is at the meteor impact site, and the final spirit is actually the spirit of a phantom. Grey points out that that's stupid, and even Aki is like, eh, go with it. The Consul gives General Hind permission to fire the Zeus Cannon, right into the same impact site that Aki and Grey are lowering themselves into to find the last spirit. You know, upon watching this movie again, I couldn't help but notice... 
General Hine is kind of right. He wants to get rid of the phantoms just like Aki, and he wants to help mankind. Yeah, he's a dick about it, but just think. Would you rather go with the unproven spirit wave energy theory from Sid, or a giant goddamn laser gun that's proven to kill phantoms? They want the same thing here, but have different ways about it. All they really need is the Mass Effect Paragon and Renegade button prompts on them. Look, they even have Captain Anderson. I'd like to ask the director of the Bioetheric Center to speak. Wouldn't you know it? The Eighth Spirit is in the Meteor Site. They found the last piece that they need. Now all they gotta do is get it and oops! High nukes it! The Eighth Spirit has been destroyed. The Zeus cannon keeps firing, which knocks Grey and Aki down and releases a massive tentacle phantom of the alien planet. General Hine, you must cease fire immediately. What you are looking at in the crater is the living spirit of an alien's home world. The planet was destroyed and part of it landed here. This is not an invasion. It never was. Oh, I see. And, and what have we been fighting all this time, Doctor? Ghosts? No fucking shit! Doctor, even if I believed in such nonsense. You've literally been calling them phantoms the entire time! Ghosts. They keep firing the Zeus cannon numerous times, despite it overheating. Gray and Aki get knocked further down into the crevice, where they find... Gaia. Yup. He's right there. Just below the Earth's crust is Gaia. Never mind all that molten core or oil or whatever. He's right there. Spirit of the Earth. Sid wakes up from his 4 p.m. nap. A phantom must have changed into the Eighth Spirit when it touched a new life born from our own Gaia. If so, it would have been given a different energy signature that set it apart from the other phantoms. Oh. Okay. So that Eighth Spirit that got destroyed? It's fine, because there's another Eighth Spirit, still one of the phantoms. They just need to determine exactly which one it is as they get surrounded by phantoms and Aki has another dream sequence. Yep, couldn't go without one more to finish it all up. Her dream phantom from her chest plate attacks her and then her womb kills it? I got nothing. The spirit in her chest plate ends up being the eighth final spirit for their anti-phantom wave, which is weird because she already stated earlier, Dr. Sid created a membrane around the infection, keeping me alive. So the first spirit wave was me. So I guess she's doubling down on her deus ex machina. Hein shoots the Zeus cannon again and again and fires it so much that it overheats and he blows up. Bye, Hein. The explosions injured Gray, who asks for Aki's help one last time. Let me do this, Aki. Do what? You've been trying to tell me that death isn't the end. Don't back out on me. Back out on what now? What's happening? What? What exactly happened here? Did Grey's spirit get some of Aki's good spirit juice from the power of cuddles again? How did it transfer from her to him? And what made him think that this would have worked with his spirit canceling out the entirety of the alien Gaia? And why couldn't Aki do it and be the hero instead of this jackass? What do you suggest I do, doctor? Ask him to play nice? Anyway, Aki sees a bird and the movie ends. That's seriously it afterwards. Clearly, this isn't a good movie. But when it comes to bad video game movies, this one gets ignored a lot because it lacks anything that's so bad or memorably over the top that it sticks with you like a battle scar. The whole movie lacks any kind of punch, good or bad. The story is inconsistent and stupid, the voice acting is bad and the pacing is horrendous, but without any kind of moment that's offensive and stays with you, the movie gets forgotten. And that sums up the entire film, a forgettable sci-fi movie. But more importantly than it being a dull sci-fi movie, The Spirits Within isn't a Final Fantasy movie. Name any of the terrible video game movies that you've seen. At least those had elements of the franchise it was based off of. The Spirits Within doesn't. Take away the Final Fantasy name and nothing changes. 
There could have been so much more put into this movie to evoke the beloved franchise that made us all want to see this movie in the first place. I can only think of a couple of Final Fantasy staples in this movie. One is obviously Dr. Sid, who is a longtime returning name in Final Fantasy games. And I think I saw a Chocobo logo at some point. And that's it. But with a few slight changes, this movie could have been much closer to what we were hoping for. Instead of eight spirits, make it three. And then we can be a part of the hero's journey from start to finish, instead of coming in during the final fourth of it. Remember that Zeus cannon? Why not call it the Rama cannon? They're both lightning gods, but one of them is Final Fantasy. And even in the most futuristic of Final Fantasy games, they're still using swords and magic. Put some of that in the movie. Give us music that will stay with us forever, just like every single entry of the video games. And finally, end the movie with a big boss fight that probably has multiple forms. Every game has done this, and the movie should too. Evoke the feeling from the series that we know and love. Instead, we get a shitty sci-fi movie with dumb characters, dull delivery, a story that doesn't engage the viewers whatsoever, and an ill-defined universe that doesn't get explained enough. And the whole thing is just boring. That's why my final rating for this movie is a Final Fantasy 13 out of 10. Well, thank God that's over with. I would hate to see what would happen if Square tried to make another Final Fantasy movie. Or two. Thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. If you want another video right away, you can watch the older one I did on Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Or for something different, I'm playing Monster Hunter over on my gameplay channel. Check that out too.